Hi everybody, welcome back to my garden and welcome back to another episode of Sharon's Home and Garden. So we are supposed to be getting the remnants of Cristobal here tomorrow. And before we get those 60 mile an hour wind gusts, I thought I'd better do a quick garden tour just in case everything gets destroyed. So let's get to it, shall we? We'll start here with my lettuce bed. Yesterday I ended up harvesting a lot of this lettuce and I'm gonna insert a video here and show you how I did that. So there's basically two ways to take care of cut and come again lettuces. Um, you can literally, and I'll show you on this first row. I have one, two, three, four or five on the first row. So you can literally collect up the leaves and cut them off like that. some of these old ones out of here or and I use my fingers for this you can go around the plant and just pick them so in essence you're thinning and leave a couple leaves. It's up to you however much you want to leave. These leaves are like sticking to each other. So this lettuce is called a rocky top mix. There is a bunch of different types of lettuce in here. And it has been drinking a lot of water. So it gets rid of some of these old leaves that don't look too good. So it's up to you how you want to do it. Chop it all off. Clean up these old leaves. This type of lettuce here, which is more of a romaine type, I like to go around and pick the leaves. But this lettuce that doesn't have as much structure to it, I like to just go in and chop the whole thing off. So this one, let me turn you a little bit. I'm going to go around. And I'm going to go through this entire bed and do that. So even after that harvest, the lettuce will grow back really fast. You can already see the leaves growing in there. Um, I'll be able to harvest this again in about 10 days. So the tomatoes, this is what I'm most worried about with massive winds. But they should be pretty well supported. Um, I've got a couple ones that are really tall 
and I have attached them to the trellis and I'm going to go through and make sure that everything is attached to the trellis. But as you can see, they are starting to set their flowers. There's another one. Almost all of them are setting flowers. And that's very exciting for me. They all seem to be doing pretty good. They've all greened up quite well. I don't know if you remember, but before I planted them, they were all like a lime green. And now that they're in the ground and they've had a couple feedings, they've really become the proper tomato color. Another thing that's about to flower is my beans. These are bush beans. And you can see the flowers here. These are beans that I started in my greenhouse March 20th about. And over here are beans that I direct sowed in the middle of May. And you can see the difference in the two pots. Doing pretty good. I finally brought out my fountain. This makes this a little happy spot here. Next to my fountain, I put my cotton in a pot here. And then I also have some cosmos here. Both things are doing very well. This is a uh, red cotton, I think it's called. And it seems to have recovered pretty well. You can see my potatoes are all doing really well. And they are on the verge of flowering as well. If we go over here, you look in there, you can see the flowers are just about to begin. Over here, this is a sun gold tomato and I have started to train it to go up the trellis here. Uh, this particular tomato has set its flowers early. So I'm really happy about that. That'll probably be the first tomato that's ripe. Next to it is these cucumbers. And again, I'm going to go, these have really shot up. Really shot up. You can see this one here is just about to get its first flowers but I'm gonna go around and make sure all of these are tied to the trellis so that we don't have any wind damage to them um, this damage here I spent about a half an hour researching various leaf damage on cucumbers and what I can I've ruled out any kind of disease and just chalked it up to sun damage. So <clears throat> that's what I believe it is. If you think it's something different, let me know. You can see the leaves are wilting here. See that? In the heat of the day, your plants with the bigger leaves will wilt like this. But check them after the sun sets and my guess is as the day cools, as the sun goes down, they will pop right back up. It's just a protection mechanism when uh, it's really, really hot out. Like today it is about somewhere between 85 and 90 degrees. You can see here, I've got some cute little marigolds, different styles. Look at that one, isn't that unique? They're looking good. Morning glories, starting to make their run. more cucumbers and you look here my very first morning glory I don't know what he's doing opening it's like the middle of the day here I'm filming this on my lunch hour but I've got more flowers ready to open there are several different varieties in here but I think they are just the most beautiful flowers You can see my cucumelons 
or uh, Mexican sour gherkin cucumbers are starting to climb up the trellis. This plant here is a jester squash. I swear this thing doubles in size every day. So you, it's setting its main leaves. Now it should start to climb. I don't see any evidence of it, but pretty soon. I can see in here that we're getting ready to flower too. Next to the jester squash is pole beans. I've got two different varieties. This one is a yard long bean and this one is a regular old snap bean. And then next to the beans are my peas. They are about five feet tall. This one is a little taller and you can see, look at these beautiful flowers. So I'm getting a lot of flowers on these now. They're all looking really good. Peppers, not much change in the peppers. A few of them, like this one, has a little pepper on it. You see that there? Let me switch hands. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, I didn't even see them flower. So the ones that I topped off, they're going to take a little longer, but my guess is they'll have more fruit to them. But until then, they're all doing really well. Look at here, we got some tomatoes growing because my tomatoes were here last year. So that is the extent of my weeding with this ground cover on. Zucchini has not changed much. I did go through and put a drip irrigation right to each and every plant by the roots. Uh, if you missed that video, I will put a link in the i card and down below. You can see these leaves too are suffering from the heat of the day, but they'll pop right back. You can see the difference between leaves in a little bit of shade and leaves in the sun. So they're all doing very well. Rhubarb, you want to see something pretty? Where is it? Look at the red in there. I want to tell you something interesting about this rhubarb plant that I learned. So I got this plant, it, it was like just a piece of an old rhubarb plant that a friend of mine had. And he figured out that he had this rhubarb plant for about 50 years. That's how old this rhubarb is. And I asked him where he got it, and he said he got it from his grandparents. So that rhubarb plant behind me there could be 100 years old. Now that is an heirloom plant. Another thing I noticed that's blooming is my nasturtiums. I'm surprised that they are blooming this early when they're this little these are called jewel nasturtiums you get orange and red and yellow i think they're so pretty pumpkins in here everything in here should be just fine with the winds i don't think i need to protect them same with them uh butternut squash Sorry, had a little brain fart there for a minute. You can see the flowers are just starting in there. A 
Watermelons are doing okay. They're just not really growing that much. And I don't, I haven't quite figured out what it is. So I think I might throw some, I don't really want to throw more fertilizer on them because I fertilized them when I planted them. But we'll have to see what's going on here. Here's more nasturtiums. Let me get out of your light. These ones I think are called blue cream. I don't know why they're called blue cream because they're not blue. Zinnias have really grown in the last week. And these little nasturtiums down here are just starting to set their flowers. These are my dwarf sugar snap peas. And as you can see, they are just getting their flowers. Now this particular bucket was planted about 10 days before this one. You do not belong here. So <clears throat> it's amazing the difference in the growth. More weeds. Onions are doing well. I always try to keep my onions really well weeded because they do not like to compete with weeds or the sunflowers that the birds planted. It's inevitable that you're going to get some weeds. <clears throat> These are my puck choy. I may harvest them before they decide to bolt because they are notorious for bolting. And then in here, I put a uh, cantaloupe. These are plum tomatoes, doing very well. And my flowers. Oh, I wish, I hope this color comes through. Lobelia, just absolutely love that. And then look at these cute little, can't remember what these are called. Colleen, what are these called? Kelbercoa. Kale is doing very well. These lettuces I'm going to let head up. And I have already harvested some of this kale. I have planted very close together. It is, I'm harvesting it as baby kale. And then these here are flower sprouts. So I pulled out my radishes because all I was getting was leaves. I wasn't getting any bulbs. Replanted very carefully. I didn't broadcast spread them. I just planted them very specifically, kind of like these. I planted these oh, 10 days ago, maybe. So hopefully we will get some radish bulbs instead of just greens. Carrots are all coming up really well. So I've got rainbow carrots in here, little finger carrots, and Adelaide carrots. Looks like I left my scissors in here. So this spinach is not long for the world here. This is stuff that was winter sown. I ended up pulling up this row because it had bolted. These are the ones I seed, I direct seeded. They'll be a little longer, but with all this warm weather, these will bolt. You can see they're getting ready to bolt. You can see that in there. In these buckets here are my ground cherries, and I've got a few marigolds in here as well, some little ones.
I'm not seeing any signs of flowering on the ground cherries yet. So I must have missed the signs of flowering because I see fruit on here. Right there. <clears throat> so that one's already setting fruit. Actually, this one's setting fruit too. Let me get out of here. Light. Right here. Setting fruit. They're all setting fruit. Cabbages are doing well. Again, they're suffering from the heat as well. But I'm very happy with how they're doing. In my raised bed garden, the yarrow is getting ready to bloom. We've got, um, this is like a rainbow yarrow. So we've got orange and pink and yellow in here. Looks like these are going to be yellow or orange. These are going to be pink. And my chives are blooming. Aren't they just beautiful? Let me get out of the... I think they're just so beautiful when they flower. In here, I ended up cutting back this elecampane because it was taking over my cantaloupe. But they're doing pretty well. One last thing, here is my fennel. This is the bulbing fennel. And if you look really close, you gotta do this without getting in your light. You can see that they are starting to form bulbs. Grass, grass, grass. This is a Cosmo from last year. Grass, grass, grass. These are kohlrabis. They look pretty good. And then celery. I just love growing celery. It's one of my favorite things to grow. The herbs here are loving the heat. You can see this basil has sun damage on it. The sun has been quite intense here lately. But they're doing good. Amazingly enough, this little, oh, I take it back. Cilantro is bolting. I just have a, I think I'm gonna try planting cilantro in the shade. See if I have better luck with it. This is thyme. This survived the winter, so I didn't have to plant it this year, as well as this. This is creeping time. And this over here is chamomile. You can see that's just about to flower. And oregano over here. Well, that is gonna do it for this garden tour. Keep our fingers crossed for me that I don't get any wind damage from any of this stuff. We're supposed to get rain, but we're not supposed to get as much as they're supposed to get in the western half of the state, where they're supposed to get three to four inches of rain in the next day. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw here, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider clicking on that subscribe button. And until next time, happy gardening, everybody. Bye-bye.